Hello, welcome to the Keyence IX training module. Today we'll discuss how to use the IX's Max Min tool. The Max Min tool will find and measure the maximum or minimum height within a given window. This tool determines if a target is okay or no good by comparing the measurement of the current target to the measurement of the registered master image. High and low thresholds can be set to ensure a target's maximum or minimum height falls within a given tolerance. Today we'll talk about how to use the Max Min tool in scan mode. In scan mode, you'll first complete your detection setup and master registration. Then it's time to add our Max Min tool. Click Add Tool, Advanced Tools, and then select Max Min. Now press OK. A square window will appear on screen. This is our measurement window. Drag this window onto the feature of the part you'd like to measure the maximum or minimum height of. I'd like to measure the maximum height of this half of our demo piece, so I'll drag our window there. You also have the option to make the tool window circular, but for this demonstration, we'll leave it as a rectangle. You can also set a mask over your tool window to ignore certain areas. This is done by clicking Mask, then Add Mask. You can also select Cut Mask to delete a portion of the mask you created. For this demonstration, I'll click Clear to eliminate the masks I made, then I'll click Close. Under Measurement Method, you have the option to choose between a maximum and minimum measurement. You'll see as I switch between the two, our measurement jumps between the highest and lowest points on the demo piece. For now, let's say I'm looking for our maximum height value of then click Next. To go back and adjust the tool window or measurement method, you can select measurement position settings. You can also adjust the size of the averaging area, which will change the size of the measurement point. The area within the measurement point is what is averaged to give us our measurement value. We'll set our averaging area to large here. You can also adjust the reading of the measurement using the zero offset feature. Let's say this is my master part and I want to read how far off future parts are from this master. I have my shift value set to zero so I can click the zero offset button and that will change my reading to zero. Now I can set my tolerances based on the master part. Let's say I have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. I can set my high or upper limit to 0.5 and my low or lower limit to negative 0.5. I'll hit test to show you how this works. In test mode, we can view a live image of the sensor. If I take the tallest piece out of our demo tool, the measurement falls far below our tolerances and we get a no good reading. If I swap the tall piece to a different position in the tool window, the measurement point will find the highest value at the new position. I've moved the piece to sit on top of our demo tool, so the sensor now sees the maximum height is above our tolerances and gives us a no good reading. Now I'll click end test and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll click Clear to get the measured value back. I'll also change my high and low limits to 27 and 26 respectively. In the extended functions, we have more options for our Max Min tool. First, you have the option to specify your measurement range. This can help speed up the processing time of a program by limiting how much of the vertical area the sensor is scanning. For example, if you want the IX to ignore any values outside of plus or minus 5 millimeters from the lowest measured point, you can set the range to 5 millimeters. You can see visually what areas are excluded by observing the overlay on screen. We'll leave our range at the default, then click Close. You can also rename your Max Min tool. I'm measuring the right side of my demo piece, so I'll name this tool Right Side, and you can see here the name has changed. You can also perform a two-point calibration, which is used when the measured values don't quite match the real-world values you'd expect. In most cases, you do not need to enable this. For more information on this function, please refer to the dedicated video on two-point calibration. For now, I'll press close here, then OK. Now we can press next to step four, and because our outputs aren't relevant for this video, I'll click complete settings, and then yes. Now that I'm back on my main screen, I'll put the sensor in run mode and you can see we're able to measure our part and determine a good versus no good measurement. Thank you for watching.